Let's check some jeans, shall we? Today we are checking jeans. And no, not the ones that you wear. Actual jeans, your genetics, my genetics. I'm not checking your genetics. I'm checking my genetics. So my package just came. I ordered a genetics test. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. It's been on my list of things to test. I have a whole list of those. And quite frankly, I've already gone through a lot of those tests. But there's still a lot that I haven't. So jeans was always on the list. I've never really had my jeans tested. And I'm just curious about what they're gonna say. So this company does a whole nutrition profile, which I think is pretty cool because they give you a breakdown with your jeans and what foods you should be eating, what foods you should be avoiding, all the things. So here it is, it's gonna, we're gonna do an unboxing and I'm gonna show you guys how I check it. I've never done this before. The company is called Nutrition Genome. I am an affiliate, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys wanna get your own test and I'll also share my test results with you all, okay? So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we need to do to test them jeans. So the reason why I'm really adamant about testing my jeans lately is I read Dr. Ben Lynch's book called Dirty Jeans and how with different jeans you have different issues with your health and you have to change your diet accordingly and they can cause different issues, blah, blah, blah. So I've been curious about how are my genes affecting my hormones, my gut, what am I eating currently, my exercise, all of that. And I really don't know unless I know what exactly are my genes. All right, so another test that I would recommend that you guys do, if you're serious about getting your health really in line, I think there's a few tests that are absolutely necessary. I think you should absolutely do a genetics test absolutely do a full panel, hormone panel, thyroid panel, cortisol saliva test, absolutely have to do an intestinal microbiome test, also known as the poopy test. I did that one, very fun. And then I think an allergy test and a food sensitivity and tolerance test is a good idea. However, that one's a little expensive. That one's more around $500 if you're looking at a good one. So I've been putting that one off just for that reason, but it is something that I also want to do. So those are kind of the tests that I would start seeing like, okay, can I do one this year or whatever your, you know, however your situation is, because they're going to give you a lot of insight on what is going on in your body and your health, especially if you're struggling to lose weight. I teach my clients this all the time inside BSB is like, you have to test and see what's happening. When we know what's happening, then we know how to address it. Okay. So let's unbox this. What do we got here? We got a little brochure. I'm sure it's a little how-to. And then they have a little package for me. It's so cutely wrapped. Let's see what's in here. All right. Okay, so we got this uh, swaz thing. I'm sure it's probably gonna be from like my mouth, whatever, that time. A little tube with liquid and then biohazard with this little thingy in it don't know what that is a return label and then i obviously put it in here so it already looks like it's pretty simple okay so let us read the instructions and see how to do this okay so we first have to register the kit i will go ahead and do that i'm not gonna make you wait for them all right, so rub swab tip firmly against the inside of your cheek 15 to 20 times using light pressure. S similar to brushing your teeth, rotate swab tip as you are rubbing. Cover entire cheek from top of the mouth to side to side. Okay, so I do that, I swab my cheek, and then I put it in the vial and twist the swab, da, da, da. I put it away, put it up in there, 
you move swab up and down within liquid, do not move swab past the liquid. Okay, self-explanatory. All right, so it's so easy, guys. It's literally just a cheek swab. So I'm gonna go wash my hands, uh, make sure everything's sanitary here, because I just opened this package from the mailman and you know, COVID and all the things. So I'm gonna go wash my hands. I'll be right back and I will show you how I'm gonna do this. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's check them jeans. If you don't like to watch this part and you think it's gross watching me swab my cheek, feel free to fast forward. But for those that wanna know how to do it. All right, so 15 to 20 times inside my cheek. So I open the tube and you're supposed to go in with a screwdriver motion all the way in. So kind of like screw drive it in and it's gonna be resistant. And then you move it up and down 10 to 15 times without taking it out of the liquid. So you have to kind of watch. So two, three, four, five, six. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I can count, guys. All right, so now I remove this and just discard it. Okay, I'll put that aside. Really easy, like seriously, compared to a lot of the tests that I've taken, this is like by far the easiest. And then I just Close this and put it in the bio. Do not place swap in the biohazard bag. Got it. It's in bold red. All right, just put this in here and then put it in the envelope and I send it off. Like, how easy is that? Okay, so just to kind of recap about this test, I ordered this test. Um, probably like three, four days ago, not even. So it came here really, really quick. First thing, it's first, even with COVID and everything. They give you a label, they make it really easy, mail UPSP, um, and then not sure what the turnaround time is, but I will come back on here in a video and talk to you guys about my results and what I got from it. So. Also, I forgot to mention, this kit was $300, $299. So it is an investment. But when you think about your health and you think about how much knowledge you're gonna be getting from knowing exactly what your genetics are, what genes you have, what mutations, all of that, how much is that worth? Like, how is that going to change your life and the way you approach your diet, what you eat, your lifestyle factors, all the things, supplements, all of that, it, I really think that it's worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mail this in and I will be back when I get the test results and I'll share that with you guys. Hello, so I got my results, okay? I sent them in on September 3rd and I got the email that the results came back on the 23rd. So 20 days, which is a great turnaround time considering with COVID and all the things and um, they said up to five weeks, super exciting. I've already gone through them. I also, what I ended up doing was you can download all of the um, results and categories and print it out. So I created a whole book. As you can see, there's a lot of information, all right, for my genetic profile. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to share my screen and I'm gonna go over my results, but I'm just gonna go over a few parts of it because we'll be here all day if I go through everything. I'm just gonna guide you through the main things with the nutrition, the strengths and weaknesses, some things that I discovered through this test, by the way, already from 
within 10 minutes of looking at my results, I was a hundred percent sure this was the best investment. So I'm the amount that I learned. I am so grateful to have done this. I highly, highly recommend this test. So I'm going to share my screen here and kind of show you once you get your results, what it's going to look like and how to go through everything. And I'm just going to take you through some of it and share what changes I'm going to make based on these results. Now they will email you once you get your results. So here is on the left here, these are all your reports. So there's an overview here and, and you're going to get, they're going to give you a status of, you know, if you registered your kits, um, if they received your sample and when the order was complete. So mine's obviously all finished. This report overview, this is kind of like a quick guide to show you everything based on your results. All right. The detailed result, this goes into detail about every single category that they tested for and sources. So this is like the very nerdy things. Some of you are not going to understand. If you haven't studied genetics, if you haven't read up on genetics, you're going to be very confused. So I highly recommend that you take it slow and don't get overwhelmed because it's a lot of genetic scientific wording, okay? But for layman terms, you'll understand most of the stuff in the overview. So what I'm gonna go through is, I'm just gonna go through a few of the overview things and quickly kind of show you the big things that I noticed that my genes are telling me about nutrition, um, and fitness and lifestyle things and the changes that I'm going to make. Okay, so let's go. The introduction here, this is just going to tell you a little bit about epigenetics, DNA, your results. So you can just read all of this in your own time. I'm not gonna go through that right now. Strength, so let's look at this. So you're gonna to wanna to go through and see what your strengths are, what your weakness, weaknesses are, what they recommend for your grocery list and what to avoid and then blood work. So with strength, some of the things that stood out for me, and I'm not gonna read this line by line because we'll be here forever, is that I convert beta carotene from food really well, meaning that things like sweet potato squash carrots, which I don't really eat much of right now, but it might change. I, my body utilizes a lot of the vitamin A based on my genes, so that's a good thing to know. Also a kind of thing that um, is, that came up to me that I can, I have whole body improved vitamin C homeostasis or homeostasis through dietary absorption. So I absorb vitamin C well, which is great. Um, let's see here. I have a lower risk of iron overload. That is good. Saturated fat, so this is kind of cool. I metabolize saturated fat and can produce ketones pretty well during fasting. And this is great because I um, overall follow a low carb ketogenic diet. So that's good news that my body is great at producing ketones while fasting. I might improve glucose metabolism from saturated fat. This is a good thing. I have a reduced likelihood of saturated fats causing weight gain, which is a very good thing for me. Um, low probability of lactose intolerance, even though I don't really eat that much dairy, just because I feel like it stalls my weight and makes me bloated. This is good to know. Um, like stuff like that. All right, so again, this is through the different categories, okay? So I'm not going to go into med, much detail here because this is, so for hormones, um, I have improved T3 and T4. This is interesting. I didn't know. And my vitamin D levels more likely to be normal range. And that is good because of the gene. Um, let's see, neurotransmitters. This is very interesting. So this gene that I have, People that have this gene have increased creativity, divergent thinking, problem solving, and better memory. I'm not sure about the better memory thing for me, but creativity, maybe that's why I started my own business. That's kind of interesting to know. Uh, improved density for dopamine receptors. That's a good thing for healthy dopamine levels. So this kind of just goes through 
generally like what are your strengths in your genetic profile all right so inflammation all of that eye health um support healthy eyes yeah i've never these are blue blockers <laughs> i know sometimes people see me wear glasses and they think it's recite no i have perfect vision i've always had really great vision uh, these are just to block the blue light from screens and then detoxification stuff dna stuff cardiovascular so this is really interesting um about as far i didn't even know that they were going to cover this as far as the heart and exercises and stuff like that inflammation and in the lungs improved uh, improvements in strength sprint times all that this is cool because now i can really personalize my fitness as well and really know what based on my genetics is the best way for me to work out so this is kind of just an overview of your strengths okay so now if we go to your, my weaknesses and I'm sharing all this with the world, I'm sharing my DNA uh, and it's okay. Uh, these are kind of the weaknesses that I have based on my genetics. So I am more likely to have low B6 and I noticed that they came up in a lot of different categories. So that is one thing. Ghrelin and appetite. I have a variant in the gene that increases ghrelin. If you know anything about ghrelin, if you're inside my weight loss program, BSB Tribe, I talk about hormones and the hunger hormone. Ghrelin's a hunger hormone. And when you have, when you have too much of it and it's not balanced, it can cause you to want to overeat. All right, and this makes sense for me because I do have a tendency to overeat if I'm not careful. So totally makes sense why I experienced that. Um, carbohydrate, so this is interesting that I have an increased probability of elevated blood sugar from refined sugar and grains. So that means, and I kind of already knew this based on experimenting on myself. If you're not a biohacker, if, you're, if you don't experiment on yourself the way that I do with different ways of eating and stuff, this genetic test is perfect for you to get because you can find things out like this and then know what changes to make. So based on this, I know I don't do well with carbs and sugar. It is like a hundred percent sure for me right now. Refined carbs and sugar for me and grains are a no, no. I already know this and now this has proven it even more so. Okay. Methylation. So there's thing here. I haven't really studied so much about the, um, MTH, FRG, it has a lot, a lot of people have issues with this and all this stuff. So, you know, Sammy, I actually did just order some Sammy and I will be doing another video talking about the supplements that I'm now taking based on my genetics and why I'm taking choline. So that may increase my need for dietary choline. So that's things, um, you know, organ meats, um, eggs, stuff like that. Hormones. This is interesting. Okay that I have no weaknesses in hormones because for the past year I've experienced a lot of issues with my hormones, which now makes me come to the conclusion is, is it all because of stress? Not because of me actually having hormonal issues or genetically having a susceptibility to have hormone issues. Is it my lifestyle stress factors that led to all my hormone issues with the cortisol and estrogen dominance? And I thought I had a thyroid issue. This kind of makes me wonder, did my hormone issues stem from lifestyle stress? Which is like insane, because it's like something that I can control in some parts or another. So this was very interesting to me. Neurotransmitters, this was a big category that told me about my, serot my serotonin receptors. I, uh, based on this, what I got was that I am not really good at utilizing and producing a lot of serotonin. So there's going to be supplements I'm going to be adding to, to increase that. Serotonin helps you. That's the dopamine, the feel-good hormone of your brain, helps with depression, anxiety, all the things that I've been experiencing that make so much sense now. Dopamine, all these like my receptors. So I'm, I have, so this is the thing right here. This is what got me like, wow, chronic stress may increase the susceptibility, blah, blah, blah to anxiety, depression, OCD, and IBS for these genotypes. This is me in a nutshell. And it makes so much sense right now, right? So, and it gives you, it's so cool. It tells you like what to do to help. So more aerobic exercises, um, you know, cognitive behavior therapy, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, prebiotics, probiotics, 
black tea, all B vitamins, it tells you what to do to help you with this, right? Histamine, all that brain health. So there's a lot of things there that I'm going to be changing. Inflam inflammation. So this is very, a lot of people have this issue, but based on this gene, I have a higher sensitivity to glypho, glyphophosphate, which is, by the way, what they put, it's Roundup. And if you're eating GMO foods, GMO corn, GMO soy, you're, in, you're digesting that Roundup. So I am very sensitive to that. So I have to avoid that. And I already pretty much do avoid that. But yeah, that was a big one for me. Um, so as you can see here, I'm trying, just trying to go over things that I really stood out for me. And I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. DNA, stuff like that, DNA repair, cardiovascular. This, is, this was very interesting to me. All right, so it says, I need more strategies to increase oxygen capacity for aerobic exercise. All right. Um, so recovery. I need to really be careful with my recovery after my workouts. All right. What else here that it says? Like it talks about ice baths and stuff like that. This was a big red flag right here. Caffeine. I am a slow metabolism. I I'm a slow metabolizer for caffeine. All right, I've been fighting the coffee, giving up the coffee for six months. And give it up and then come back. Give it up, come back. This test and just seeing this throughout all of my testing segments convinced me that I really need to take a break from caffeine. All right, so it says that I metabolize coffee very slowly um, and I am more sensitive to it. So, you know, vegetables might help and stuff, but still it came up a lot. All right. And then I have a higher sensitivity to chronic stress on my heart due to my variants in this gene. So I have to be really careful. All right. So when you know this, look at already how powerful this information is. Knowing that chronic stress can be more detrimental to my heart makes me rethink okay, what lifestyle changes do I need to make? What do I have to kind of take a load off of my business and my personal life, all the things? Because this is, this is scary stuff to think that if I continue with my high stress lifestyle, that I could get heart issues. It's like, this is something that really makes you take more control of your nutrition, of your lifestyle. Cause you see like, this is, you can't deny this. There's no, like the denial goes only so long. Like this is your DNA. This is your body. You now know, right? So what are you going to do moving forward? That, that is the way that I approach this. And I'm taking this very seriously. Okay. So those are my weaknesses. Okay. Now with the personalized gro grocery list, this was kind of cool to know. They talk about things that I need more of in my diet based on my genetics. So B12, I know this comes up a lot. So, and they label some, you know, tell you some foods that contain that potassium prebiotics, um, different types of fats. Notice they didn't say saturated. I do have to limit that. Manganese, iodine, all of this, phytoestrogens, um, niacin, selenium, zinc, all these herbs, B2, folate. So these are the things, magnesium, vitamin C, that I need choline with the eggs, stuff like that. So these are the things, the foods that I should be eating regularly for my genetics. So this is super, super cool to know, okay? Because I'm literally going to start following this and making changes in my way of eating, okay? Based on this. Food and drinks to avoid. So these are kind of based on my genetics, the things that I should really be careful with, all right? So food dyes, I'm not worried about this because I don't ever eat this crap and no one should, no matter what your genetics say, okay? Caffeine, this is a big flag for me. So I'm going to be careful with my coffee. I've almost cut it down for a week now. I'm still alive, but I'm gonna be careful with that. I'm really gonna limit that. I switched to green tea and I know that's still caffeine. So I'm going to have to try to kind of limit that. I got like smoothie everywhere on me. All right. So high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, all of this crap. Nobody should be doing this anyway. All right. And, and I do not, I do not con consume foods with this. Artificial sweeteners. 
A lot of people are very sensitive to aspartame and sucralose. I do not consume them. Once in a while, I might have something that has it in there that I don't know, but now I'm gonna be very diligent in reading labels. Folic acid, so there's a difference um, between, um, so fortified grains and all of these things have folic acid, and this causes damage on DNA, so I'm gonna be avoiding that. Mercury, yeah. I try not to do um, high mercury fish anymore. Saturated fats, so this was very interesting to me. Although my genetic profile said that I'm great at not having saturated fat cause me weight gain, it does say that I need to limit my saturated fat to not over 22 grams a day, okay? Now, because I follow keto low carb, this is going to help me, this is gonna make me rethink my way of eating, all right? Based on this, I might switch more to a paleo approach. Why? Because the keto diet contains a lot of fat, saturated fat, and I do consume a lot of saturated fat. So this is the changes that I'm going to make is eliminate dairy, eliminate cheese, all of that, mostly because I know that I should watch my saturated fat, okay? So no more cheese boards for me. I mean, guys, you gotta live, right? So once in a while, it's fine, but if you're doing it every week, and your genes are telling you like, hey girl, that's not how we are built. You know, you have to listen to your body. This is how you listen to your body. A lot of people ask me like, I don't know how to listen to my body. I don't hear anything. I'm like, you're just not listening enough. You're not, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to listen, right? This is one way that we listen to our bodies. Um, sodium, benzene, do not use this crap anyway. Um, I'm really careful. Um, inside my program, I teach my clients how to read labels and I talk about sodium, benzene and to avoid that and all that. And then estrogenic foods, minimize coffee, green tea. Again, this comes up. Again, avoid plastic water bottles. This is something we should all be doing, okay? And I'm trying to hurry up because I don't want to be taking this forever and ever. Personalized blood work, this was interesting. It tells you based on your genetic results what they recommend that you check, okay? So B6, fasting glucose. I have checked my fasting glucose, and it's great just because I follow a low-carb diet. Vitamin D, I have checked it, and I have been upping it, and then homocysteine homeocysteine, I have not checked, okay? So here is, I'm gonna go back to the screen and stop sharing. So again, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this genetic test, and I highly, highly recommend that you invest in it, and if you do not, if you can't afford it right now, that you start saving money up to, to invest in it, or you ask it for a Christmas gift for somebody, because I will tell you, this is a game changer about my nutrition and how I'm gonna make changes, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here really quickly the changes that I decided I'm going to make based on my results, okay? So kind of make notes. So with the nutrition changes, I am going to limit my saturated fat to 22 grams a day based on what my said, my test said. I'm gonna limit caffeine, all right? So I'm really gonna reduce my coffee, only have it once a week, even if that, but really limit it, okay? For things based on the detailed genetic test, and I'm not gonna go into today, I, um, I do better with the high protein, high fiber breakfast, all right? So before for breakfast, I used to either just have like a fast, a fat coffee or, um, you know, eggs and bacon. I'm not gonna change it to uh, my kefir smoothie, which I add a lot of fiber with flax seeds and all that. I'm going to be doing a recipe how I do this. Um, and the proteins from the kefir, I add protein powder, all the things. So it's a lot high fiber, high protein. I'm going to do my flax pancakes with some kind of protein, all of that, right? My way of eating, I am going to play around and switch to a low carb slash paleo way of eating and see how my body reacts versus than doing a strict ketogenic diet. And this is the beauty of it, right? You don't have to be married to one way of eating. I teach this in my program and I tell my clients all the time, like your body changes, things change, you discover new things, things happen, you have to adapt. You cannot be obsessed with one thing, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. And then absolutely no GMO corn or soil, soy, soil. I'm really careful about this anyway, but there are things that I allow myself that I'm now going to be very diligent on, okay? Lifestyle changes. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start focusing a lot on HIIT training and aerobic exercise, all right? So 
This isn't cardio, I'm not saying cardio, right? Because I used to do chronic cardio. This is high intensity interval training, meaning really on for 30 seconds to a minute and then off, and aerobic. And I'm gonna start doing more of that than my cardio and just strength training, all right? Meditation and yoga, I'm really gonna start taking that more seriously to control my stress because with my genes, chronic stress can cause me you know, heart disease, heart attacks, all those things that I want to avoid. All right. 30, based on my genes, I need more than 30 minutes of exercise. All right. So I do well with an hour or 45 minutes to an hour, but more than 30 minutes. So knowing that is very powerful and then better recovery from workouts. So I have to just, you know, find a way of how am I going to do recovery now? All right. As far as supplement goes, these are the supplements that I'm going to start taking and adding seriously, strategically into my days. All right. So B6, I'm already taking a B vitamin. So I'm going to continue that and make sure that it's the right dose. Choline, I'm going to be taking a look at that. I don't really eat a lot of organ meats just because, you know, I don't really get them often where I live. And I also not a fan of the taste. So maybe I'll take a supplement of them or take a choline supplement. Vitamin C, this is something I have not been taking and I don't really get a lot from my food. So I am going to be start doing vitamin C. Magnesium, I already take magnesium. So I'm going to continue that. And then vitamin D, I already take it, but I'm also going to make sure that it's the right dose. So that is in a nutshell, right? As quick as I possibly can go over these results with you, the changes I'm going to make knowing what my genetics say about my body. This is powerful stuff. This is life-changing stuff, all right? And I'm going to keep you posted. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at BSB Tribe because I'm going to be sharing based on these changes that I'm making, what I'm noticing, you know, weight loss, how I feel, energy, my brain, all the things. I'm going to be sharing this, all right? But what I will say to you is if you've been struggling trying to find out why you can't lose weight, what food you should be eating, what your genes are telling you about your body, why you're struggling with this, that, other energy, headaches, any of the things. If you're just wanting to get your life and like a healthy body and you want to figure out how to live your vital, optimal health, I think this is a great place to start. Okay. If you have any other questions about genetic testing, please reach out to me. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.